Hello, hello. Welcome back to another video on Python data structures and algorithms. In this video, we're going to be talking about memory maps with strings and lists. So in the previous video, we talked about memory map images uh, using variables and uh, variable assignments. And we did uh, swapping to the values of two variables. So in this video, we're going to be talking about strings and lists. And strings and lists are basically what we call um, uh, collections. So uh, with a list, it's more apparent because you can have multiple things. You can have an int, you can have a float, you can throw in a string in there, right? This is what we mean by collections. And so, and the way this is implemented is you have something called, called an array. So uh, in the previous video, I drew a tuple. And instead of putting you know the array inside uh, the, the tuple box like I did here with ints, I put the value 100 inside the box. We have the array outside the box, and the tuple is actually uh, the way it's implemented. There's a uh, data member that points to an array, and that's why we have an array here of size two. So, with our collections, uh, strings and lists are implemented using arrays. And with strings in uh, other languages like Java and C++, strings are known as character arrays. In Python, we don't have the character type, but basically. Uh, what the character type is in Java and C++, we have, they're denoted by single quotes. So in Python, strings, you can use single or double quotes, but in Java and C++, uh, there's a distinct, you have to distinguish them. So uh, with a character, it's a single character, so A, and we have a single quote to represent the character type. Whereas if you were to do this, this is a string. Uh, of one character a so if you had this this is a character and if you put in like a b this is a string and you would never see something like this right where you have two characters in a single quote in java and c++ so in python uh instead of doing this we just we scrap the characters completely uh, and we just have them uh, use strings so you can do a b c or a b c this would be uh, the same thing. So let me get rid of this. So the way we would represent strings in memory is we're just going to draw the array. And uh, so let's start by actually uh, executing this line by line. So first, remember we have our call stack. So here's our call stack. And then we have our string with the value Python. So we're going to create a string and then create an array. So one, two, three, four. And I'm not going to close this off just because uh, this uh, diagram could be used for list as well. And uh, with list, you can modify it by, you know, append or pop. So I don't want to just keep drawing boxes and have to count beforehand. So I'm just going to, uh, leave it opened here. And here we have uh, character P. So I'm just going to draw it like so. So it's all capital. Okay. And then now we create our variable S1 and we point it to this string. So here the string is a collection. It has an array and at each uh, index we have an individual character of course um, this is uh, characters you know for the users uh, in Python we don't actually have a character type but this is how it's implemented so next we have s1 lower so what's actually happening what happening here this is a method but what does this method do um, so if you're not too familiar you might think that oh it's uh, changing the string so that every character is lowercase. So, but that's actually not what happens. Um, instead, when you call s1.lower, it creates a new string. And it has a lowercase for every character. So it would be like so. Uh, draw this as fast as I could. Um, so 
we have s1.lower. And this is s1.lower. It uh, takes this uh, s1. We have the string python, and we create a new string and return it. But because we're not assigning this to any variable, what's happening is we just have this string just floating in memory. It's, it's, you can't reach it. There's no variable pointing to it. So it's just, it's just stuck there. We create it. We do nothing with it. And uh, in Python, we have something called a garbage collector. And every so often when we run a program, every time that there is a object that cannot be referenced, like this one, the garbage collector will go and delete this object because it will free up the memory. This is uh, why it's called the garbage collector because it's uh, collecting garbage. It's getting rid of it. So this happens at the end, at the end when we uh, uh, finish executing our program. But I'll just leave this here. And here we have another one, s1.lower. We're calling the method again, but it's not using the same object. It's actually creating another object. It just so happens to have the same value, but know that they are uh, different in memory. Uh, they're different in different memory locations. So they're the same, uh, they have the same value, but two different objects. So here we have uh, all lowercase. Okay. And then we create our variable S2 and we point to this uh, string object. And then at the very end, when we print, we say S1 is equal to uh, Python. So S1 is uppercase, so Python. And then S2 is lowercase. And that's our answer. Okay. So moving on to the next one we have list and so remember with strings strings are not mutable so whenever you call s1 the lower s1 the upper you are forced to create a uh, new uh, string object each time so with list we have we create a list and it has uh, three integers in it 10 15 20 so let's uh, create a call stack And we create our list object. And we have our array. Actually, let me move this up. Oops. Let me get rid of this. Just, uh, we want to make it uh, open just in case we need to add more values. So, the index zero we have 10. Index one we have 15. And uh, index two we have 20. So that's the first line. We create our variable list one and point it to this list object. So that's that for the first line. And then here we see list two equals list one. So What's going to happen? Is it creating a copy? Nope. It's seeing this one is pointing to this object. So we create list two and then we point it here. So list two and list one, they're two different variables, but they can access the same object, which here you start seeing a problem. Uh, many students have when they are working with lists, they, uh, don't see this, uh, they miss this memory uh, reference issue. And it's uh, very common among beginners. And so when we have uh, list one dot append 25, we're saying list one, which is this list object, and we're appending 25. So it's another int. And then we say list two, uh, we assign it index zero to 100. So what is list two? List two is this same list object. So when we reassign it, we're saying, okay, index zero, you are no longer pointing to 10. Instead, we have int 100. And then now you're pointing to 100. So when I print both list one and list two, we get 100, 15, 20, 25, and 
printing list 2 would also be 100, 15, 20, 25. Okay, so that's working with lists. All right, and finally, let's put it all together. Uh, I want you to do this one on your own and um, uh, just take, take like a piece of paper and a pen and draw it on your own. And then we'll come back and work on this together. All right, so we have our cost stack once again. So we have, what is this, S1, and we have a string Python. So I got to draw this again. And we have a string, a string has an array, and then we have our individual characters. So that's uh, our string Python, and then we have S1 point to this string object. Next, we have our list. So our uh, list one, we have a list object. So let me create it right here. Actually, let me check something did I? Yeah, I, I spelled I I spelled this. You gotta put an I in there. Uh, okay, so list. We have, once again, our array. So we have our int 10, int 15, and int 20. OK. And then we create our variable list1 and point it to this list object. And now we have list two and this two is uh, another list so we create another list object here's the array and the index zero we pointed to list one so what is list one it's this list object right here so our index zero we pointed to this list object and then uh, the uh, index one we pointed to S1. So what is S1 pointing to? This string object. Uh, so I'm just gonna. Hmm, should I do this way or? Yeah, let's just. Hmm, I don't want to cut through. It's kind of rude. Uh, let me go around. There you go. So it's so at index uh, one we have we're pointing to this string. So so that's uh, this two. So that's the first three lines. Now we have S1 equals S1 dot lower. So let me scroll down. S1 equals S1 dot lower. Remember, uh, strings are not mutable. So we're going to have to create a new string with all lowercase. So we're creating our new string. We have our character array. And then remember, we use our red marker. We cross this out to signify that S1 originally pointed to this string, but now it's pointing to this new one, which is all lowercase. And then uh, we call list1.append25. So what's list1? One? List1 one is list list, and we append 25. So let's create int 25, and there you go. So now when we print S1, we see S1 is, what is S1? S1 is this string. This string has all lowercase letters. So it's uh, Python in lowercase. And then when we print list one, what is list one? We see list one is this list object with 10, 15, 20, 25. So it's 10, 15, 20, 25. And then finally, list two. What is list two? Let's scroll up a bit. List two. So the first 
uh, at zero, index zero, we have the list of this one. So we have 10, 15, 20, 25. And then what's at index one, we have the original string of S1, which is Python, all in uppercase. Okay, so that's our answer. And why don't we verify that by running our code. So you see, uh, in our first page, we see S1 is Python, uppercase, S2 is Python, lowercase. Looks good. And then we check our next uh, code snippet. We said list one was 115, 20, 25. List two was 115, 20, 25 as well. And that checks out, right? Because we assign list two to list one. So list two and list one both point to this same list object. And uh, finally, we have our third code snippet, which is Python, lowercase. Let's check that. Python, lowercase. 10, 15, 20, 25 for list one. 10, 15, 20, 25. And then list two is this one over here for index zero and Python all in uppercase for index one. And yep, checks out. So why didn't a, uh, why didn't, oops. So why didn't um, index one become lowercase? Because at index one, we referenced uh, the original value of S1. Just because S1 changes does not mean that index one of list two would change. So it's kind of like similar to the idea of having that temporary variable, because you can kind of see like an array, you can kind of think of it like each index, it's, it's kind of like its own variable, if you want to think about it like that in terms of memory. So that's exactly uh, why we, uh, when we changed S1, to all lowercase, it did not affect index one of this list two. All right, so yeah, I hope you learned a lot in this video and uh, I'll see you in the next one.